Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're going to be talking about two severe weather events, a snowstorm, and Arctic air. Welcome back everyone. I appreciate all my followers out there and all the new followers. I would love to reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And if you hadn't subscribed already, it's free to do so. All you have to do is click the subscribe button and ring the notification bell because it give daily updates. And we'll be fine tuning these two events over the coming days. So stay weather aware and please share this video with your friends and family to let them know what may be to come. So let's kind of zoom out this morning and take a look at what's happening. And where's all the cold air, right? It's well to the north up in Canada. It's 15 below zero in Calgary. I actually saw 42 below zero in Edmonton. So that's some brutal cold air up there. But it's finally warming up in, in Alaska. It's 23. That's warm for their standards. Uh, but 25 in Seattle yesterday, they had a low temperature of 17 and a high of only 23. So that was the coldest morning in 11 years and the coldest day in 31 years. So that was some true Arctic air that's filtering in into that part of the country. 50 degrees in Los Angeles and down here to the south. <laughs> You're just waiting for some cold air because, man, it was 70 degrees this morning in Dallas-Fort Worth. Plenty of soup, and that's the problem with these systems going to be coming across. That's where we're going to have some severe weather threats for the southeast in the coming days. But look to the north. There's some snow flying in places like today in Chicago where you may end your snowless streak. It hadn't snowed in like 287 days there because we've got new winter weather advisories in place for you know portions that have seen the snow so far this year in Minnesota and Wisconsin. They haven't seen too much snow in Iowa, but we haven't seen any snow at all in Chicago. And I think that comes to an end with these winter weather advisories today. Typically a winter weather advisory more or less across kind of talks about one to five inches of snow. And I'm expecting probably about two inches in Chicago, but up here off the West Coast, they still got those winter weather advisories into portions of Oregon and uh, California. And then the Sierra Nevada is just getting crushed with so much snow. They still got that little bit of snow up in New, New England, but let me show you some of the pictures up to uh, in the Sierra, Sierra Nevada here. They've had a record December, all time record, 193 inches of snow. I mean, that's some incredible stuff. I mean, in fact, I was laughing yesterday. The observers kind of walked out. And they have to walk a big 50, 50 yards to get the, you know, reading on how much it actually snowed. It took them 40 minutes. <laughs> it took them 40 minutes to walk 50 yards, right? I mean, so you can imagine what they had to go through to uh, just to get to, to get a reading <laughs> with all that snow. But uh, yeah, I wanted to show you a pretty sight uh, this morning and kind of li lighten the mood because we, we got some two severe weather threats to talk about and that is some serious stuff so let's delve into it right now but first we got that snowstorm to talk about in chicago yeah so this is the overall 3k uh, nam model about uh, 19z that's around you know one o'clock this afternoon and we've got snow breaking out in um, minnesota and two portions of iowa where they've got those winter weather advisories and yes chicago should break their snowless streak and that may be just the things to come because there's another chance uh, later on at the, by the end of the week towards the beginning of the new year. But we have heavy rain on the on the on the southern side into uh, southern Illinois, southern Indiana and Ohio. And this will continue to push off to the east and bring the snow along with it. So I, I pretty much think the entire state of Wisconsin is going to uh, you know, see some snow today, even a good chunk of Michigan. And that will swing on to upstate New York as well with some light to moderate snow for their reasons. And they're still going to be getting snow off and on off the west coast here into portions of Oregon into uh, uh, California. But that same system will continue to push across and dump some light to moderate snow into portions of Utah going into northern uh, Arizona here and into the uh, mountains of uh, Colorado. So Let's kind of zoom out and take a look at the overall jet stream because it's some powerful stuff with that first initial system that's coming in 184 knots. This is going to be screaming fast across. It's going to bring some very high winds 
in its wake. So definitely some damaging winds along its path. And that's going to bring up the Gulf moisture that's just kind of sitting and waiting. I talked about the 70 degree temperatures in much of the south. And that's the morning lows, right? <laughs> I mean, so you can see the air mass it's going to be tapping into. And unfortunately, that's going to set the stage for another round of severe weather. And the Storm Prediction Center has actually expanded this from yesterday. We talked about as things started to come starting to come together. So let's highlight this. A marginal risk, essentially anywhere from East Texas going into New Orleans, uh, Atlanta, uh, Baton Rouge, into uh, Montgomery, as well as uh, Shreveport, Louisiana, could see still and even is it even out into central uh georgia here could see some stronger to severe thunderstorm but we're really kind of highlighting the 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 yellow shaded area around the memphis tennessee area the nashville tennessee going into birmingham jackson huntsville alabama those under areas will be under the gun to see all three modes of severe weather so we're talking some hailstones which is not as prevalent but damaging winds and unfortunately we do, do expect a couple tornadoes that might be coming out of this event and it looks to be that it possibly might get upgraded and later guidance is worked it's all about timing with weather so yes the storm prediction center has highlighted they they chose to expand the, the expand the risk but they do look a, a possible upgrade to a 10 percent significant risk for tornadoes across the northern mississippi area and the northwestern alabama area so as guidance starts to come together and as the low level jet will see if they can emerge in timing yes this could actually get uh, upgraded so i'll definitely fine tune this and as as it gets as it gets closer i'll be putting out another video uh you know tomorrow as well uh, so stay tuned for that with all the as we get kind of fine-tune things as they as they near so but yeah by eight o'clock on wednesday we could be looking at some some tornadoes starting to break out it looks to be the timing what i'm kind of breaking this down about three o'clock in the afternoon to about midnight that seems to be a nine hour window there where we could see some storms breaking out and by the time we hit eight o'clock starts to kind of fairly peak uh with a lot of rotation in the atmosphere and a lot of damaging winds just could start breaking out into isolated supercell thunderstorms and here's the tornado parameter index but yeah by the time we get into the eight o'clock uh time frame on wednesday and if we expand the view and look at the latest h triple r guidance and some of the popcorn activity that could take place yeah you always get concerned when these things are discrete and kind of separated from ice from themselves right so that's why they have that tornado you know tornado of uh, you know a threat in place as well as some damaging winds because these could be some isolated supercells kind of break out into portions of arkansas mississippi alabama going into tennessee and don't let your guard down in central georgia either because you could still get some of those strong to severe thunderstorms into the late afternoon hours and the early evening hours on Wednesday. But let's expand the view and take a look at where all the Arctic air is. Is it ever going to come, right? It's been bottled up in Canada. I showed you it finally released from Alaska. Now it's pushing south. We got the cold air in Seattle. It's starting to drain down and the really kind of, you know, brutal type air is starting to push down further, further south into the Dakotas, 25 degrees below average temperature anomalies that's some cold stuff that's well below zero for them and that underneath would still be in the warm sector kind of waiting for that uh are the arctic air and unfortunately that's going to set the stage for uh, a severe threat and possibly another severe threat that's coming behind it and this one looks to be more intense than what we might be experiencing on the 29th for tomorrow time frame because we've got a powerful low pressure system that's going to be digging off the west coast and we still got all the ingredients in place out here in the warm sector and again the kind of same dynamics is going to be running into uh, out ahead of the cold front so this cold front's not going to be in place as of yet as this low pressure system will continue to swing across 
and it's going to bring some powerful wins. I kind of really expanded the view to kind of show you the wins and not just, you know, and also the wind direction on where this is coming in. So as this low pressure system comes, comes off the, uh, the West coast here, it's going to tap into this warm Gulf soupy, you know, atmosphere. And it's going to, it's, you know, you have your South winds and all it's going to be able to do is pick up that and have that lift. And unfortunately, set the stage for yet another round of so severe weather. Because look at the dew point that it's able to tap into. That is like some spring type atmospheres type stuff. I mean, here's the graph at the bottom. These purples are 70 degree dew points. That's the measure of moisture in the atmosphere. So this is very unusual to see these, you know, 70s, middle 70s. For late December, it's almost unheard of. I mean, this is typically what you would see in the spring and May time frame, and that's why we're getting these severe threats because we haven't cleared out the Gulf. It's been plenty warm since winter started, and it's really for the entire month of December, and that's why we have had such a record-breaking De December. At least that's one of the reasons. And then well, let's move move across and take a look at the as the, the risk and this starting to come together as that system come across and this is New Year's Eve day now so now the storm prediction center even four days out has highlighted a slight risk for severe weather back in the Memphis Tennessee area going into Little Rock Arkansas Jackson Tennessee uh, Jonesboro so some of the areas that might get hit on the 29th are going to be hit again on the 31st and possibly the first time frame because this is really going to start to get get its act together by the time we get into new year's day but there's also a cold side right it's all there's also a cold side to the system and the one big change that happened from yesterday is this system is sped up all right so it's it's sped up you know, we're talking arctic air arctic air actually travels fairly fast than what a lot of the models say and that's yeah as we kind of zoom in and kind of fine-tune things yeah the ingredients are pushing further south sooner than what they were showing yesterday because of the arctic air it's very heavy it's moving south right it's coming so that's going to change some of the timing on some of these events that could be pretty impactful into the days to come and we'll go over this so we've got the warm sector that's where we have that severe threat into portions of arkansas uh, on that new year's eve time frame there's the snow that's going to start breaking out with these tight isobars that's the pressure gradients very high winds along this so we have some snow into salt lake city going into flagstaff uh, northern new mexico the mountains of colorado here the snow is going to be breaking out and you have the severe threat to the south side and then as we expand the view and go into New Year's Eve night, we could have some stronger storms break out in the Dallas Warworth area into Oklahoma City, snow breaking out of the backside into Kansas, which in the middle of that, we could transfer to some of that to be ice because this is the middle of the night, right? It's the coldest time of the, the day. This is about the mid midnight time frame. And if we continue the view, that that system just expands more snow for iowa more snow heavy snow possibly on the north side of that 850 millibar low pressure system in chicago we could be looking at some heavy snows with this convective banding really training across this area look at the red line that's the freezing line right and we got snow breaking out of the texas panhandle and down to the south here we've got very significant possibly event that might be unfolding for the southeast as ingredients are starting to come together for that even five days out they still have that slight risk for severe weather and again a lot of these ingredients are starting to come together this may be a bigger event than what what's to come on the 29th and so yes places into memphis tennessee going into nashville atlanta birmingham montgomery alabama a lot of these same places it looks to be a bigger event a more expansive event goes into tennessee goes into portions of kentucky and yes I'll, we'll be fine-tuning this as this particular event comes uh gets closer as well so as we expand the view and look at some of the shear that might be taking place this is why i think this is going to be a, a bigger event and more widespread because a lot of the dynamics in the shear is really kind of an, an unfolding but it's pushing it again further closer in so now we're talking it could be a daytime event this is this is the morning hours you know 6 at 6 a.m on new year's day right and so we got a lot of shear in place over the southeast 
And there's the 850 millibar low pressure system with the cold air entering the Texas panhandle and entering uh, Oklahoma by then. So it's really kind of sped up from what we've seen yesterday. And that will continue to push off into the afternoon hours into the south southeast really expanding over a maybe a multi-state event by then again we'll kind of really fine tune this as the days ahead but these areas in the southeast portions of the carolinas even portions of kentucky west virginia even the ohio valley don't let your guard down with this second system that's coming aboard for new year's day and like i mentioned we'll be fine tuning this as the things the dynamics kind of get closer and as all the ingredients come together because there's the cold side to it as well here's the afternoon hours on saturday new year's day right it's about three o'clock in the afternoon you see that arctic air it's three o'clock in the afternoon right we're talking 10 below zero <laughs> to the dakotas right minnesota that's some that's some cold stuff that's true arctic air pushing south single digits and then the iowa getting into the teens uh, pushing into missouri uh kansas dropping down the you know below freezing in the texas panhandle so there's the arctic air and then there's the 70s to the south in the warm sector where they're going to be seeing the severe weather and but as this system continues to push push across we talked about this lagging this lagging low on the back side right and then we talked about the arctic air yesterday and i'm like look I know the GFS is showing it. I know the European is showing it, but I'm not buying it, right? I mean, there's dry air. Dry air is, or Arctic air is the driest air. And yeah, with new model guidance, as this is starting to come together, it just kind of wipes it away, right? I mean, it just, you know, snow's falling, <laughs> but ain't much of it's going to be be able to reach the ground on the backside because there's that second lagging system that will traverse across uh, te North Texas, traverse across the Southeast, um, but the, you know, the ground's plenty warm, but a lot of that atmosphere is not even showing for now, but a lot of that, that may fall, it's less than 20%. You probably wouldn't even bat an eye if there was a 20% chance of, of rain. When there's a 20% chance of snow, you kind of perk up, <laughs> right? Hey, can it happen in the South, right? It's like, yeah. I mean, you know, if it happens, it's going to be at a very overnight event. Most of you guys are sleeping. And a lot of this is going to be drying up in the mid latitudes. It's not going to be able to reach the ground, <laughs> you know, so that's, that's the latest on that. And then with the timing on that, that's just going to put the Northeast out of it as well, because it rapidly swings across. And then you get the Arctic air, the dry air on the backside, and that's going to wipe out all the precipitation and move it off the coast by the time we get in that third time frame. So these dynamic systems really rapidly uh, move across and the, the cold air drains in on the backside. And let's take a look at the snow because here's the, here's the latest uh, model guidance for the kind of the blend. This is why I showed you the blend. It still has, here's the graph at the bottom right here. It's basically less than one inch. So if it happens to hit the ground and come down, Yes, that's why they have a dusting down here further south into North Texas, going into Oklahoma, going into Arkansas, these southern states here, because if it happens to reach the ground, we could be looking at maybe a dusting with this, this particular southern lagging branch indicator. But the more promising snow is going to be out here into the west. And then that those two systems that's coming in for portions of Chicago, that that first system, possibly two inches, that second system, we're talking a, a maybe a more significant event with maybe six inches of snow. So compoundingly, we're maybe six to eight inches to come by the third for Chicago. And then, but yes, because it rapidly clears out, it's mainly a northern interior event. And it's still got the heavier snow for Wisconsin as well as uh, Michigan. That's where the snow is, is going to unfold. And there's the heavy rain. So we got those systems coming across. It mainly sets up east of the Dallas Warworth area into East Texas, but the heavier batch is going to be locked and loaded over the Southeast. So much of this is going to be in the form of some severe weather, unfortunately, with some flooding rains as well. And then we got all that precipitation that's mainly going to be in the form of snow into our Western regions, especially in the higher elevation. So I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video. Definitely subscribe to my channel if you hadn't already. Please share this video. So let them get the word out on the, these two a potential big events for severe weather. Uh, catch the next update where I protect you before and after storm.